then I think we can get started. All right, uh, hello everybody. Uh, my name is uh, Attila Toth. I'm a developer advocate here at Timescale. And uh, in uh, today's Twitch stream, uh, I'm going to talking. I'm going to be talking about continuous aggregates and how to uh, get started with continuous aggregates, uh, how to use them, why are they useful at all, and uh, uh, I will also do a demo of continuous aggregates using uh, using financial data, stocks data, intraday stocks data, and at the end I will have uh, some minutes to answer some common questions that I found uh, in our Slack uh, channel uh, and other uh, other other online channels. Uh, if you're watching this recording on YouTube and you want to follow the streams uh, live, uh, go over to twitch.tv slash timescale uh, db. We are doing uh, Twitch streams every Wednesday. Uh, sometimes we do more than one Twitch stream per week. So if you want to learn about timescale db, you want to, uh, you know, see the new uh, updates uh, regarding timescale db, or you just you or you're just interested in you know time series data and how to work with time series data, uh, I, I highly recommend checking out these streams. Uh, and if you're watching this on YouTube as well, uh, check out the description because I'm sure there are a lot of uh, useful and relevant links that you might want to check out. Uh, all right. With that said, let's let me jump into today's uh, uh, stream. So uh, the agenda is uh, first we are going to cover what are continuous aggregates, uh, how do they work. I'm going to do the demo with uh, with a financial use case, and uh, as I said, I'm going to be answering some common questions that I uh, that often come up uh, in our Slack channel or other channels about continuous aggregates. So, uh, what are continuous aggregates? Uh, so, uh, first, I just want to give you like a, uh, like a, I guess a mental model, like how to think about continuous aggregates, and I think this uh, statement uh, summarizes it really well. Which is a continuous aggregate is pretty much uh, a materials view uh, specifically created for time series data. So it's made for time series data, and it's and it's 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 very very similar to uh, uh, Postgres materials view. Uh, then one uh, uh, good feature of time continuous aggregates is that it automatically refreshes data in this uh, materialized view uh, if you set up a refresh refresh policies. Uh, another interesting thing with continuous aggregates is what we call real time aggregates, which is basically you can. Uh, you can query data uh, both from uh, your actual continuous aggregates table that is already materialized, uh, but if there, there was uh, new uh, incoming data since the last refresh, uh, continuous aggregates gives you uh, that data as well, which is not yet materialized. Uh, uh, I will show you examples of this in the demo part, and also I will mention it uh, throughout the, the uh, throughout the presentation, throughout today's stream, so you can understand it better. Uh, and one huge benefit uh, of continuous aggregates is that uh, uh, it it provides faster uh, query execution, especially for long range uh, queries. So, for example, if you want to query. Uh, uh, historical data, or you want to query uh, over a long time period, uh, you might not necessarily interested in the, you know, in in the uh, in in the detailed specific records. You just need an aggregation. You just need, uh, uh, you know, the average, the the sum, uh, uh, the count, uh, or you know, max min. You you want to just use one of the aggregation functions. Uh, and the continuous aggregates uh, do this job really well. Uh, how do you create a continuous aggregate? Uh, you use the same uh, command that you use for creating uh, a materials view in Postgres. So let me get my drawing tool. So first create materials view, uh, then obviously the name uh, of, this, of the continuous aggregates. And the one important 
thing here uh, is to add with timescale db. Continuous because this with this basically you are telling uh, the database that you want this to be not just a regular materials view, but a, but a continuous aggregate. Uh, then uh, you put your select statement here, uh, which uh, uh, needs to have a uh, uh, time bucket. So that's mandatory, but I will talk about uh, that as well later on. Uh, but basically that's, uh, that's it. It's really simple, very, very uh, similar how you would create uh, a simple materials view. Uh, you just need to add that, hey, you want this to be a continuous aggregate. Then how do you define uh, refresh policies? Uh, there are two main ways you can do this. One is to add uh, an automatic uh, refresh policy, which uh, you know what it basically does uh, is uh, you use the add uh, continuous aggregate policy function, and you provide four parameters. So the first parameter is the name of the uh, hyper table. Sorry, it's the name of the uh, continuous aggregate. Uh, which you are, which we, which you previously created. Uh, the second parameter, this start offset parameter, uh, will indicate uh, the start uh, time of the uh, time period that you want to uh, uh, get refreshed. So, for example, here the start uh, time will be uh, two weeks, two weeks ago. The end offset will indicate the end. Uh, time of this uh, of this time period. So in this ex in this example, uh, the time window we are looking at is between two weeks ago and an hour ago, and that's the time window that will get refreshed. Uh, how often? Uh, this is what schedule interval is for every hour. So every hour, this refresh policy will make sure that uh, the data that is between uh, you know, two weeks ago and one hour ago will get refreshed. You can also do this uh, manually. This is useful if you if you just uh, want to, want to uh, refresh a part of your uh, of your data one time. And so, with refresh continuous aggregate, uh, by calling it, uh, you can uh, submit three parameters. First one. Uh, is the name of the uh, continuous aggregate. And then the second and the third parameter is to define the time uh, window that you want to, re re where you want to refresh data. So for example, here, the start period uh, or the start time of the period is uh, uh, 1st of September, 2020. And the end time of the period is 15th of uh, October, uh, 2020. So the time period is uh, around one and a half month. So that's what is going to get uh, refreshed and nothing else in the continuous aggregate. Uh, all right, a little bit uh, uh, more presentation and, I, and we will jump into the demo part because I think it's more interesting. But just to understand, uh, you know, the concept behind uh, continuous aggregates and how they work. So just a very simple image that we use to illustrate this. So basically, uh, this is one way to visualize, you know, time series data and uh, and continuous aggregates. So basically, what you have on on the bottom is uh, is uh, uh, the regular hyper table with you know detailed you know minute level data uh, or some some you know granular time series data. Uh, row data, we can just call it row data or hyper table row data. Then here you have uh, the uh, continuous aggregates. And what they basically do is they aggregate the row data uh, into, into buckets, basically. So you define, let's say you have a minute level data in your row hyper table. Then in your content continuous aggregate, you decide to uh, create uh, basically uh, hour level uh, rows because maybe 
uh, you don't you, you you don't necessarily need to know the minute level details. You just want an, an hour aggregation. So you have so instead of having a, a sixty rows per hour, which you have in the row data down below, uh, instead of that with a continuous aggregate, you have only one record per hour. So you have much less data, which means uh, when you query the data, you have uh, uh, much less data to query, so it will be it will be faster. Uh, and basically, when you create uh, when you create a continuous aggregate, these are the parameters uh, that I just show you. This is what you need to uh, define. So we have a schedule interval, we have a start offset and end offset. And basically, as I said previously, the start offset uh, defines the time uh, where the uh, uh, refresh period should start. And the end offset uh, defines where the refresh period should end. Um, and the scheduler inter interval defines uh, how often you want this uh, period to be refreshed. So basically what you see here uh, uh, in blue is, uh, is the data that will get refreshed if you set up a refresh policy on a continuous aggregate, which means you know that as, as time goes, as time goes by, uh, you will have and you have incoming data uh, every hour, uh, the database uh, will look for data that uh, was uh, two weeks ago, that was uh, inputted two weeks ago, or that has the timestamp uh, with a value uh, of two weeks ago, if that makes sense. And the end period uh, with, uh, with the value of the last hour's timestamp. So TimescaleDB will look at these two times and if there is new data, maybe uh, in the last uh, hour you have new data, you have uh, uh, new, uh, in case of you know stock data, maybe you have new uh, ticker symbols that you are uh, that you're monitoring or, or anything like that. So if there is a change, Timescale DB will will uh, will see that and it will update uh, the materialized view, which is the continuous aggregate. And uh, I mentioned real-time aggregates before. Uh, real-time, what real-time ag aggregates do basically, uh, because if you go back here, um, as you can see, there is a, a one hour uh, 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 difference. So basically when the, when the continuous aggregates uh, get refreshed, uh, there is an hour where you might have incoming data, which is not yet in the continuous aggregate. And if you query the continuous aggregate, um, you 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 would miss, you know, normally uh, you would you would miss uh, what's uh, what's not in the which hasn't been materialized yet. But with uh, real time aggregates, it, it this doesn't happen. Because if you query the continuous aggregates, uh, it will actually uh, give you data from both uh, the uh, you know the materialized view, and it will give you data uh, if that is needed to satisfy the query. It will give you data from the row hyper table as well, which is this part. So this part right here, the bottom right part, that is data that is only available in the in the row hyper table yet, it's, it, it uh, hasn't been uh, materialized yet. So it's not in the continuous aggregates. Well, it hasn't been materialized yet, but if you query the continuous aggregate, it will actually give you uh, that, uh, that data as well. But uh, the, the very uh, cool thing about this is that it's gonna be uh, probably fast because you know most of the data. I mean, depends on what kind of query you're running. But most of the data that you're querying, which is this, this is like most of the data that you're querying, um, 
is going to come from the materialized table, so it will be instant. And only a small portion of the uh, data will come from the row hyper table. And in this case, um, in this case, maybe you are querying data from the past two weeks and uh, the part which, or the data that will come from uh, the row hyper table will be only data from the last hour. So, it not a, so it's not a lot of amount of data. All right, and the last part, so querying continuous aggregates, um, obviously just like with other timescale DB uh, features and functions, it has full SQL, or full SQL support. Uh, oops, uh, it has, it provides the, uh, the uh, query planner benefits, uh, mainly because uh, a continuous aggregate technically is, uh, is a hyper table uh, under the hood. So it, it has uh, uh, similar benefits to regular hyper tables. And obviously, as I mentioned, it saves uh, computation resources on time bucket queries because uh, in a continuous continuous uh, aggregate uh, view, uh, you you like the database doesn't need to calculate those uh, time buckets. Uh, on the other hand, if you just uh, create you know your regular aggregation query, uh, your ad, regular uh, ad hoc query, uh, and you include a time bucket. Uh, the database will need to calculate those uh, time bucket values, and if it and if it's a lot of data, it it could take you know a lot of time. But with uh, with continuous aggregate, those time bu time bucket values has been already calculated; they have been materialized, so it should be very very quick. Now there are some limitations, uh, which is important to mention, and it's also important that these are current limitations. Uh, the team is, uh, you know, the team is continuously working on improving uh, timescale DB in general, but also specifically uh, continuous aggregates because this is a, a very uh, useful feature for for users. Uh, so these are just current limitations. They might get fixed in a few months or sometime in the future. So uh, continuous aggregates uh, don't support window functions, so you cannot create a window window functions a window function inside uh, when, when you create the continuous aggregate. Uh, you cannot do joins um, and you cannot create continuous aggregates on top of another continuous aggregate. So these are some of the current limitations. Uh, oh, and no multi-node support, uh, but again, this is also something that the team is uh, is working on, so it will probably uh, get introduced sometime in the future. All right, uh, let me show you an example uh, 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 in the fi in the in the financial world uh, uh, to show you how continuous aggregates can save on uh, query execution time. So let's say um, when so let's say we we talk about stock data. Uh, in, in, you know, with stock data, you have symbols, you have uh, candlestick data, you have, uh, you know, price, price data. And, uh, let's say you want to monitor, you know, something like the S&P 500, which has, uh, 500 symbols. It technically, I think it has more symbols, but let's just say it has 500 symbols, ticker symbols. And you monitor, you monitor the stock, uh, the S&P 500, uh, in, in one minute intervals. So you have one record for each minute and you're monitoring 500 symbols. So what this means is that uh, 500 symbols times, well, one minute cancel data, in an hour you have 30,000 rows. So if you want to query this data and you want to create, um, you know, time buckets per hour, you will need to create uh, a bucket uh, uh, per per symbol per per one hour with continuous aggregates, and that sorry that adds up to thirty thousand rows per hour. If that makes sense, uh, with continuous aggregates aggregates, instead of having thirty thousand rows per hour, what you have is only five hundred rows per hour, because you only need to. Uh, 
uh, because you because continuous aggregates do uh, you know the aggregation part they they uh, do min max average sum whatever you want to do and so basically you have one symbol uh, for one one symbol per hour if that makes sense um, yeah sorry so you have 500 rows per hour uh, which means that for each symbol you you see the one hour aggregation uh, values and when you query these aggregated values you only need to query uh, 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 500 rows and what that adds up to is um, instead of querying 30,000 rows and again this is a really small scale like this could be you know 300,000 rows or 3 million rows or you know even more but uh, instead of instead of querying th uh, 30,000 rows you need to query only 500 rows and that means you have uh, uh, ninety-eight percent less data to query, uh, and so basically, uh, you only need to query two percent of the of the total amount of data to to get the aggregated values, um, and that's a huge, that's a that's a that's a big, uh, 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 you know, that's going to cause a big cut on your uh, query execution time. So that's why continuous ag aggregates are really useful uh, because instead of going deep and uh, and querying 30,000 rows, you just query 500 rows from a materialized view, which is continuous aggregates, and it, it's much quicker. Uh, let me actually show you if, if, it, uh, if something uh, didn't make much sense or uh, you just want to see how it works, uh, you know, working with real data in the real life. So let me jump to the uh, demo part. I think I have one more slide. Uh, yeah, so we are working, uh, I'm gonna show a demo uh, with stocks uh, uh, data. And uh, basically just to, you know, I, I chose this uh, this uh, data set because it's fairly simple, even if you're not really, in, if you're not deep into like stocks or, or, or trading uh, or anything like that, it's, it's fairly simple, you have, basically candlestick data, which means that, you know, one candlestick includes uh, includes these parameters. First, you have, you know, high, which means that if you're talking, of, if you're talking about one minute uh, intervals, uh, then the high, uh, par high value represents the highest uh, price in that time period. Open means uh, uh, what was the price when that minute started, so when that time period started, close means what was the price of the stock when that time period ended, and finally low, what what was the lowest price in that time period. So it's very simple, uh, and obviously uh, uh, with these values, you also have a symbol associated with these, which can be you know some company like Tesla or Microsoft or some other uh, company. Uh, all right, so with that said, uh, let me jump, oops, let me jump to the beaver. Also, let me quickly uh, crop out the left part of the screen because that's not needed. All right, um, so, uh, <clears throat> So as you can see, uh, we have a database with uh, intraday stock data. Let me just quickly query it. So we have a database called uh, stocks intraday, which is basically, um, let me order it by time. Okay, so the most recent data is from, uh, uh, I think, last Friday, uh, the 3rd of uh, September. Uh, and so basically this database has uh, minute level data 
uh, for uh, different uh, stock symbols. Uh, and uh, it has the uh, same kind of uh, candlestick data that I just uh, showed you. So it has, uh, you know, obviously, sorry. So obviously it has the time parameter, which is very important. Then we have price open, price close, price low, uh, price high, uh, the trading volume. I forgot to mention that, the trading volume uh, and uh, the ticker symbol. So this is what a usual candlestick uh, uh, data looks like. And so basically we are going to use uh, this data set to uh, explore how continuous aggregates work, uh, what you can do with it, what you cannot do with it, and how to, uh, how to set up refresh policies. Uh, and we're gonna uh, basically do everything that I mentioned in the presentation part and uh, do some more by answering uh, common questions from uh, that often comes up that often come up uh, with uh, with with our co within our community so uh, let's start uh, with this query uh, to show how many uh, rows we are dealing with uh, this is a uh, so I'm using uh, not the usual uh, count asterisk way to to get the number of rows i'm using uh, this uh, hyper function called approximate row count and then the uh, table name as parameter uh, if you don't know this hyper function uh, you can check it in the timescale db documentation but basically it, it gives you the uh well it gives you what it says it gives you the approximate row count and it's 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 much quicker because it uh, it gives you the the, the row count from uh, from uh, table statistics. So it doesn't actually go through the whole table. It gives you the, the, the count from statistics. So as you can see, uh, maybe uh, it's better if I switch to text. Uh, so we have more than 9 million rows, uh, which is, uh, uh, if I remember, it's, uh, it's uh, it has about a nine or maybe maybe 10 months of intraday data. So it has, you know, it could be more data, but but I think it, it's still like enough data to show how continuous aggregates work and and it, 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 it it's enough data to uh, to to show off the, the benefits of continuous aggregates. So let's start uh, with something uh, uh, simple. So basically we are do we are going to create first uh, uh, a, a candlestick uh, candlestick uh, aggregated candlestick uh, uh, we can call it data set uh, which is which we represent the hourly summary uh, for each uh, ticker symbol so basically we are going to create a, a one hour uh, one hour time bucket. So instead of minute level data, we will have hourly uh, data. Uh, let me make this thinner. Okay. So time, we're gonna have the uh, one hour time buckets. Uh, we're gonna have a symbol. Obviously we don't want to do anything with the symbol. Well, we want to group by uh, uh, the symbol. Then we will have, uh, uh, we will use the first uh, hyper function. Uh, which basically will return the first opening price uh, in that given one in that one hour time period. This is a hyper function, and then another hyper function called last, uh, which gives you the last uh, closing price from from that one hour time period. And then we're gonna do the usual min max uh, average and sum. Uh, aggregation functions to basically create uh, a kind of candlestick uh, 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 chart or, or data set. So if we run this, uh, again, we are not, this is not continuous aggregates yet. This is just, uh, you know, aggregating data and just showing you how much time it takes to, to do this kind of query on a data set like this. So if you run this, um, it, it will take 
uh, some seconds. Uh, it will take about, I think, 10 to uh, less than 10 seconds, okay? So it took, as you saw, uh, I think about six or seven seconds to generate uh, this aggregated uh, aggregated uh, 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 query. So you have uh, one hour aggregations for each uh, symbol. Now, if you want to do this for for each uh, for uh, in a continuous aggregate, uh, because you want to uh, you know use this query as a base to do like further analysis or to do reporting or, or something like that, uh, uh, you 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 want to create a continuous aggregate for it. Uh, and as we saw in the presentation, this is how you create a continuous aggregate. Create materials view. You define a name for this. Uh, we're going to define a different name. Uh, let's say hourly, um, hourly stocks. Uh, or let, let's just call it hourly, hourly CAGs because this is about continuous aggregates. So hourly CAGs, uh, we are using uh, uh, continuous aggregates. And this is the same query as, uh, as before. So this is the exact same query that we use to generate uh, this result. So this will create our uh, met, uh, continuous aggregate. So let's run this. Uh, so if we if we run this, uh, it's still running. What what this is doing is actually materializing this whole query. And and basically, uh, and this is done. So basically, this this has created the continuous aggregate in a materialized form. And so the last query that we did, all that now a continuous aggregate materialized, so it's it's stored on disk. Uh, and, uh, and, uh, and and this is it, this is how you create a continuous aggregate. It's, it's fairly simple. Uh, now let's see uh, what is actually, uh, you know, let's see if it worked. So uh, let's run a, a simple query on this continuous aggregate, which we call hourly kegs. So select asterisk from hourly kegs. So if we run this, this is instant, uh, which is which is great because uh, you know the first query that we run that took uh, about seven or eight seconds. Now this took this took nothing. Again, if I run run it again, this is this is instant. Now to show you the difference, uh, you know, specifically, you know, in numbers, uh, let's use uh, explain analyze to, to see actually the difference. So here's the original query, not, not the continuous aggregates one. This is just the, an aggregation query. Uh, the same one, we are creating one hour buckets and candlestick data, uh, but now with explain analyze. And we are interested like, exactly uh, how much time it takes to, to to generate this result. So if I run this again, this is not, you can already see this is not, not instant. The database is trying to aggregate this, aggregate this, uh, this result, 12 seconds, around 12 seconds. So if I scroll down, what you see here is that the execution time was actually more than 12 seconds, uh, which is which can be a lot, especially that you know we are using a database that could be much more bigger. Like we could have much more stock data from you know past years, but still it's uh, it's, it's it was 12 seconds uh, without using continuous aggregates. Now, if we if we uh, run the same explain analyze, but now on our continuous aggregates, because again, this uh, result uh, was produced uh, uh, using the original query, which, you know, which is not continuous aggregates. Now let's use the continuous aggregates one. Um, hourly CAGs. Uh, so we are just doing select asterisk from hourly CAGs with explain analyze to see uh, how much time it takes for it to run. Now, 
it's almost instant. It, it's definitely uh, uh, less than one second. Uh, it's actually 800 millisecond, which is, again, in some situations you might expect, uh, you know, you might want to, you know, make it, uh, you know, quicker. Uh, but again, we are talking about uh, aggregating uh, 9 million uh, uh, rows. So, and also we like didn't consider what kind of machine we are using. Uh, so what what this just really shows you is the difference between using continuous aggregates and not using continuous aggregates. So if I just, you know, once, once more, if I run uh, the original query, which is this one, this will take a lot of seconds, four, five, six, seven, eight. So it, it took more than eight seconds. And now if I use uh, the continuous aggregate, it's instant. So you already have the results there. So that's what really continuous aggregates can do. It's just so much quicker to get data from continuous aggregates than to use, uh, you know, something else. Um, all right, now let's 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 do something a little bit different uh, because you might want to um, uh, use filters. You might be you you might not be interested in you know each symbols uh, prices or our aggregation. <clears throat> You just need to know one specific symbol. You're just interested in one specific type of uh, stock data. Uh, let's say TSLA, which is Tesla, but we could use you know any other symbol. And we are also only interested in uh, in uh, in the last uh, three months. So basically, what this query does is. Uh, give you, it's very similar to the previous query, uh, where it, it, it gave you a one hour aggregation for each symbol. This one only gives you uh, the one hour aggregation for one specific symbol, which is Tesla, and from the, and considering data from the past uh, only three months. So, um, and again, this is not continuous aggregates, this is just a regular uh, query. So if you run this with explain analyze, uh, it took uh, uh, 200 millisecond. Again, this was fairly quick because uh, we shortened the time period uh, and we also uh, just, you know, we filtered for one specific symbol. So it took only uh, a little bit more than 200 uh, millisecond. Now let's do the exact same uh, type of query with the same filters, uh, but now uh, let's use our continuous uh, aggregate, uh, which is called uh, hourly CAGs. And it should show up, by the way, on the left side in the views. If I hit refresh, yes, hourly CAGs. I have a bunch of views, uh, but uh, we, we, only, we are just only using hourly CAGs in this uh, uh, demo. All right, so now let's just query uh, the the continuous aggregates again with explain. Filters are the same. We're using Tesla as an example from the past six months. So if you're running this again, instant result. And uh, remember that the uh, previous query took uh, more than two hundred milliseconds. This one took less than four. Uh, milliseconds, the execution time. I'm talking about the execution execution time. So the again, we are. It's not a lot of amount of data, but you can still see the difference uh, between using continuous aggregates and not using continuous aggregates, uh, even with this small sample of data. All right. Uh, one thing which uh, might be useful if you wanna. Uh, dig deeper uh, into the continuous aggregate that you just created is, uh, is uh, or if you just want to view some more information about co uh, continuous aggregates, uh, you can use a timescale DB information view uh, for continuous aggregates uh, using this uh, query. And uh, 
if you don't put a, a, a you know a, a where close here, uh, then you will see all your continuous aggregates. But for now, we only want to see the one that we created, which is uh, still called hourly um, hourly CAGs. So if we run this query on the timescale DB information continuous aggregates view, uh, what we get back is the record uh, which has more information about the continuous aggregate. Uh, uh, a main thing that I want want to show you, which you might find useful, like first of all, obviously you have the uh, view definition, uh, which is the uh, you know the select statement that you use to create the continuous aggregate. Uh, so that's here. And another one, another uh, field which might be useful is the materialization hypertable. Uh, so I might have mentioned it already, but it's good to know that a continuous aggregate is uh, is a hypertable. Uh, so it has the same kind of uh, 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 it has the same uh, characteristics as a regular hypertable. It has uh, it has chunks. Uh, and it has uh, all the benefits that a hypertable has, and uh, and uh, in this uh, field or column, uh, you can see the name of the underlying hypertable. So the name of the hypertable, which is essentially the the, the hypertable, uh, uh, you know, behind or that it, that was created for the continuous aggregate. And uh, this can be useful because the next next uh, query I wanted to show is uh, is a query which which can uh, uh, this is a, a time scale DB internal uh, uh, I think it's uh, I, it's not a view I think it's it's the actual uh, uh, table so you might you know you don't really need to look at this and also I will show you what's why it's not really uh, useful to look at this but just to just to show you. Uh, that, uh, you know, how it works. Uh, so if I copy this, the name of the uh, hypertable, which is better as hypertable 54, um, using this timescale DB internal table, uh, and just, uh, uh, because as I said, as I said it's, a hype, it's, a, it's an actual hypertable, so we can query uh, to see what's actually stored in the continuous aggregate because that's one thing you know what you get as you know return data when you query the continuous aggregate but it, but it's another thing what is actually stored inside a, a continuous aggregate so if i run this uh what you will see is a bunch of different things uh so this is not uh, uh you know you cannot really get anything out of this because Continuous aggregates uh, doesn't store the actual aggregated values. Like the the continuous aggregates don't store the the uh, you know the average. They don't store store the actual decimal uh, number. What continuous aggregates store under the hood is these partial uh, partial values, basically, and uh, and. Uh, and and the reason for this is, uh, you know, as I said um, uh, in the presentation, there are current limitations to hypertables, but uh, when we work on, you know, functions and uh, different parts on on timescale DB, uh, we always try to you know think about the future and what other features we might have in the future, and uh, for example, if we have if we uh, introduce uh, uh, multi-node support for continuous aggregates. Uh, it wouldn't be possible to introduce that feature if you just uh, store uh, the the actual, uh, for example, average values. Like if you store the average values, uh, you won't be able to have distributed continuous aggregates. Uh, and so basically, that's the reason we 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 store uh, what we call partials. Uh, because this will enable us in the future to develop uh, continuous aggregates further and make it 
make it better. Uh, but one other thing I wanted to show here, uh, uh, which might help you understand better how the content segregates work under the hood, is that there is a column called chunk ID. Chunk, sorry, chunk ID. So, uh, and and this is because you know, as I said, ultimately um, this is a hyper table, and so uh, with chunks. And so basically, whenever you 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 refresh, uh, whenever you refresh the um, uh, the continuous segregate, either using uh, refresh policies or you manu manu manually refresh it, uh, time scale DB only actually refreshes that part of the continuous aggregate, which actually needs to be refreshed. So this way, it's uh, it's it's very efficient. So it only only refreshes those chunks that that uh, were actually changed and that actually needs to be uh, updated. Uh, going further, uh, let's see how to set up um, automatic refresh policies, which is a, you know, it's a, it's a, it, where is my drawing tool? There you go. So it's a very important part of, uh, you know, working with continuous aggregates because probably you want to, you know, you want the, the continuous aggregate to get updated periodically. Uh, maybe you know every hour, every two hours, every day, or something like that. Uh, and this is essential to do that. You just set up the policy, and uh, Timescale DB will make sure that your uh, con your your continuous aggregate will will get updated. So uh, as we saw in the presentation, you have to uh, use the add continuous aggregate uh, policy uh, function and provide four parameters. First parameter is the name of the continuous aggregate. Uh, second parameter is the starting time uh, of the of the time period. Uh, end offset is the ending time of the time period, and schedule interval is uh, is indicating how often uh, you would like it to run. How would you like? How often would you like to uh, refresh your continuous aggregate? So this example, if I run this, what it will do is uh, first of all, I need to change the name. So hourly kegs, because that's the name of our continuous uh, aggregate. Uh, so basically uh, start of set is, is in this example, two weeks. Uh, end of set is one hour. So, and the schedule enter is also one hour. So what will happen is that every hour, it will refresh uh, the time period that is between uh, 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 two weeks ago and one hour ago. So that time period will be refreshed and it will run every hour. So let's just see how, how it look, uh, what it looks like. So if I go here, I run this query, uh, uh, there you go. What you see as a, uh, you know, returned here is the, is the, uh, ID of this policy. And basically, this means that the policy uh, uh, has been uh, 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 activated. So uh, one important thing to, to note here is that because, uh, and actually, we will, you know, the, the questions part come here, but because it's relevant here, uh, we specified schedule interval as one hour, but that doesn't mean that when you actually set up this refresh policy, it will immediately run. No, it will run in an hour. So right now, nothing happened because I just set up this refresh policy. Uh, um, so when the actual refresh will happen is, is actually in an hour. So that's important. Now let's look at some questions. Um, that I have here. Actually, let, let me uh, go back to the presentation. Mm. Yeah, so let's answer some common qu common questions. Uh, so the first question, again, these are questions that I I, I found uh, in our in our uh, Slack community, which if you're not part of yet, I highly recommend it because uh, there are some really awesome Timescale DB users there. Also, there is a, a number of Timescale DB engineers. Uh, in our Slack, who are you know ready to help? Also, we have like 
uh, developer, uh, developer advocates like myself there. So uh, I, I recommend joining at uh, slack.timescale.com. Anyway, so this question, um, I might have rephrased these questions, uh, but, uh, but I saw all of these questions in some shape or form in the community. So I used uh, the with no data option uh, when creating the contents aggregate, uh, but still when I query the contents aggregate, data is already there and also it's very slow. Uh, why is that? So basically I didn't mention the with no data uh, uh, parameter option, uh, which is uh, which, which you can uh, read further about in the timescale DB uh, docs with no data. Uh, but basically, let me, if I can quickly find it. Y yeah, so if, if you're interested, you can read more about uh, the with no data option here. But basically what this does is, uh, is uh, here's an example. So if you add, you can add the with no data uh, 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 statement here at the end of your uh, create materials view uh, comment. And basically uh, you might expect uh, that, uh, so, okay, let me tell you first what it actually does. So what it does is it create, so it creates the uh, contents aggregate, but uh, it there will there won't be anything materialized. So it it creates the you know the materialized view the contents aggregates, uh, but technically there will be nothing written to disk. So the it, the no data will be materialized, uh, which can be useful and it's actually recommended to do it this way uh, because this way you have much more control over how you and when you materialize uh, data. Because uh, for example, if you have a lot of historical data, uh, then you, without specifying this, so if you don't specify this, uh, if you don't specify with no data, uh, by default, everything will be materialized and you might not want to do that if you have a lot of historical, uh, historical data. If you specify this with, if you add with no data, nothing will be materialized. And later on, uh, the da actual data will be materialized when you set up a refresh policy and it gets, uh, and when it runs, or when you manually refresh the, uh, refresh uh, some part of the data. So let me show you this example, how it works. So let's, let's run this script. We can call it temporary kegs to whatever we can call it that. Uh, so if we actually let me uh, uh, drop the previously created uh, uh, continuous aggregates, which by the way, you can just use drop materials view and then uh, the name of the continuous aggregates. So this will drop uh, the uh, continuous aggregate. There you go. Okay, so if we run this, this will create a new, uh, again, we have the same select statement here uh, that we used throughout this, uh, this demo, which uh, creates these, uh, you know, candlestick aggregation uh, view. Uh, so if I run this, as you can see, like you, you already saw that this is instant. And this is instant because nothing uh, nothing has been materialized. So that's why it's really quick because it, it really just creates a, a continuous aggregate with nothing materialized. Uh, so now uh, what you need to do if you want to, if you want data to actually get uh, uh, materialized because that's like the main, uh, main benefit of continuous aggregates, like if there is nothing materialized, it doesn't really make sense to use continuous aggregates. Uh, so you can set up an automatic refresh policy. 
which if we run, this is the same refresh policy I think that we used before. So if we uh, set this up, it added a new continuous aggregate policy. And uh, if you want to make sure that it's added, this is something I didn't show you uh, in the previous example, but I'll show you now. Uh, you can see the refresh policy in um, one of the timescale DB information views, uh, which is called jobs. So if we query this view timescale DB information uh, jobs, and you use the job ID here. So if you use the job ID in the where clause, which was returned when you created the policy, which we just did. In our case, it's not 1007, it's uh, 1010. So if we use where job ID equals uh, 1010, uh, if you run this, uh, we see a record for this uh, for this job, which is a, co a, a continuous aggregate uh, refresh policy. And it has all the parameters that, that we submitted uh, <clears throat> when we created, which means the schedule interval uh, and uh, the, the offset times uh, and everything. Uh, here's the, the uh, detailed configuration. And one thing I wanted to show here is that, as I said, uh, I just set up this policy, but the next start will be in an hour. So currently where I am, it's uh, exactly 5 p.m. And it's gonna be, so this refresh policy uh, will make sure to run a, a refresh job uh, at, uh, uh, at uh, almost uh, 6 p.m. Uh, because that's what we uh, told the database by setting a, a one hour uh, scheduling interval. Um, so yeah, so basically or let me go back to the original question. Uh, so yeah, I used it with no data options still when I query the content so data is already there. Yeah, so this is something I noticed at least one person, but probably there's more uh, who expects like, if you specify with no data and you make a, uh, a query uh, to see what's inside the continuous aggregate, uh, you might expect uh, nothing to be there. But what you get is actually data and you, do, and you don't, some people don't get it, why? But let me show you what's uh, actually, um, 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 actually, that's another question that I'm trying to answer right now. Um, no, anyway, so, so when you say with no data, let me show you the actual uh, materials hypertable, which uh, actually doesn't have any data in it, because that's what with no data refers to. So, um, I'm trying to look for the hypertable name, uh, which is here on the right side. Uh, so if you get, if you copy this hypertable name, uh, this is something I showed you uh, uh, some a few minutes ago. Uh, let me try to find that query. So yeah, here. So you can actually see what's what's actually stored in a continuous aggregates you know, underlying hypertable. So if we paste the hypertable here, and if we run this, um, um, did I query the right hypertable? Um, probably not. Hmm. I think I, I queried the wrong hypertable because there should be nothing here. Uh, because, or I or I ran the refresh policy. Uh, anyway, uh, to uh, 
Okay, so I basically showed uh, how to create the content segregators with no materialized data. And then we set up the automatic refresh policy. Um, and then let me um, let me find a query. I know we're a little bit over time. Just this is something uh, I want to make sure I show. Um, Okay, so let's use this query uh, to uh, view information about the continuous aggregate. So the continuous aggregate that we just did is uh, temp kegs2. So if I run this, the uh, materialized hyper table is this one. Hmm, okay, interesting. I will I will look into this after the stream. Um, anyway, uh, let's go to the next uh, question because we already over time. Uh, so how to materialize only recent data? Uh, but be able to materialize all their historical data if needed. Uh, so this is something uh, which is useful in a scenario where uh, where you have, as I mentioned, where you have a like when you have a lot of data, a lot of historical data, and you don't necessarily want to uh, materialize the whole uh, whole uh, whole data set or the whole. You don't want to like aggregate uh, the full historical data. You just want to maybe uh, materialize the last. Uh, I don't know, one month or six months worth of data. And then if needed later on, you can also uh, materialize all their historical data. So uh, how to do that? Uh, so basically, uh, basically you do the same uh, thing that I did before, you, you create, uh, a materialized view with uh, with no data. So, for example, we can go call it. Uh, um, uh, I don't know. Question three. Uh, and this will create the the continuous aggregate with no uh, materialized data. So, if we run uh, this. Uh, and uh, now you have uh, much more control over uh, how you actually, uh, you know, what you actually materialize. Uh, so what you can do is uh, manually, uh, so first of all, you can set up the, you know, the, the same uh, automatic refresh policy uh, that we did previously in the, in the other two examples. Uh, you specify you know, a start time, end time, and schedule interval. Uh, so that's that's easy. Now another thing, uh, so that's how you make sure that uh, uh, recent data is uh, is materialized. In this case, it's it's two weeks, but it could be you know four weeks uh, or or whatever you need. Now how you how will you make sure to materialize historical data? And that's where you can actually manually uh, refresh a specific part of the of the row underlying hypertable. So with calling the refresh uh, continuous aggregate function, uh, you can uh, you can uh, tell Timescale DB to refresh only uh, or yeah refresh that part of the data that is between, for example. Uh, 1st of December 2020 and uh, 15th of uh, April uh, 2021. Uh, so if you run this, uh, this will uh, not be instant because this is actually materializing uh, data right now in the background, uh, but it's done. So basically what it did is, uh, is refreshed uh, that part of the 
uh, continuous aggregate, which you specified here with this uh, interval. So that's how you can uh, make sure that not all the historical data is materialized and uh, you know, you're know you not wasting disk space uh, with data that you don't actually need. You only, uh, you only have data materialized that you actually need, that you actually want to use. Uh, and besides that, you have your uh, refresh policy, which makes sure that the most recent data is materialized as well. So that's also sometimes uh, come up. How can I see information about the created continuous aggregates? Uh, I think I already showed that. Uh, basically, you can use the uh, timescale DB information uh, view called uh, continuous uh, aggregates, and you can uh, uh, filter it uh, based on the name of the continuous aggregate. So for example, uh, this query. So if you run this, you can see uh, a detailed uh, record of uh, of the of the continuous aggregate you can see the name of the uh, underlying hyper materials hyper table if you want to look into that uh, for any reason and you can also see the uh, definition the view definition that you used when you created the uh, hyper function if you're interested in the if you're interested in to if you're interested in looking into the specific uh, refresh policies that you have uh, for a specific uh, uh, for a specific uh, continuous aggregate, what you can do is use the uh, timescale DB and uh, again a timescale DB information view uh, called uh, jobs, and you can filter on it in different ways. One of the ways is to filter on it based on the hyper table name. So you get the hyper table name uh, uh, from uh, from uh, from the continuous uh, aggregates information view, and then you submit that here. Uh, and we don't have uh, that hyper table. I think it's fifty five. Yeah. Uh, and, and by submitting uh, the name of the hyper table, you can see what. Uh, refresh jobs you have for that uh, continuous aggregates. Well, actually you can only have one uh, refresh policy uh, set uh, for one continuous aggregate. So you can see that uh, right here, uh, you will see uh, uh, the schedule invert interval, uh, whether it's scheduled or not, uh, the next start time. Um, so, yeah, basically uh, just more information about your continuous aggregate and the associated uh, policies. Uh, and then another question, uh, which uh, I don't, uh, which I think I already answered, but this is something I, I saw some people ask, uh, uh, why my initial queries are slow. Uh, so this is probably due to when you create the, uh, create the, um, let me have a, let me show an example. So when you create, not this one, where we created the, um, the materials view, maybe this one, this is good. So you create the material, uh, the continuous aggregate uh, with, uh, with no data. So if you create uh, with no data, nothing will be materialized. Uh, and if right after you created the this uh, continuous aggregate, you query the continuous aggregate and you expect it to be, you know, fast, it won't be fast because nothing is materialized. So you basically, uh, so basically, uh, timescale DB uh, reaches for the data on the fly. It doesn't use the materialized data because there is nothing materialized. And also another thing which with with uh, which might be confusing for for beginners right after you set up the uh, refresh policy, uh, it's not gonna ran, run uh, right away. It's gonna run in the scheduled interval. So in this example, uh, it would run in an hour. So if you if you just created the, meta, uh, the continuous aggregate and then you create uh, a refresh policy as well, uh, there will be still no materialized data. So the initial queries that you do 
until the the refresh uh until the scheduled interval for the refresh policy your queries will be probably slower because they will come uh, from the actual underlying row hyper table and not the materialized uh, contents aggregate. So I hope that uh, that was useful. Um, um, I think that was it for, for today's presentation. It was a little bit, uh, we're a little bit over time and also my, my webcam I think just stopped. Anyway, uh, I hope it was useful. Uh, if it was, please, uh, uh, you know, comment below. You can also ask your questions. If you're watching this on YouTube, uh, make sure to check the description for for links. Uh, if you want to learn more about Timescale DB, uh, content segregates, or other Timescale DB features, check the documentation docs.timescale.com. Uh, I recommend joining the Slack community of Timescale uh, DB where you can uh, ask your questions, uh, get opinions. Uh, there's a lot of TimescaleDB users there, also TimescaleDB engineers. It's a very good uh, uh, community, slack.timescale.com. Uh, you can also tweet us at TimescaleDB, and uh, even though my Twitter handle keeps changing, you can uh, tweet me uh, at AttilaToteDev. Uh, and uh, I hope it was useful. Uh, thank you. Uh, see you in the next one.